Yo, hello everyone and welcome back again to a brand new video. Do you want to connect Google Forms to MySQL database? This tutorial will guide you throughout the process of transferring from responses into a MySQL databases for advanced data management. So, let's connect Google Forms to MySQL today. Before we start with this video, make sure to watch it from now till the end so you can have the full experience. So for today's video guys, and usually we are going to use this article to follow so we can have a better vision of what are the steps that we are going to do. So the first thing is how to connect Google Forms and MySQL. First of all, set up in an in A10. So make sure you have in A10 uh, installed and running. So in A10 on any platform using NPM or Docker, or let in A10 host it for you on its cloud infra infrastructure. The next step is to create a new workflow to connect Google Form and MySQL. So in A10 basically this is like the website that we are using at the moment. So you have to create an account in it and install it. So everything has to be done in it. So yeah so once you are done this is like basically the platform that which will be created for you so the next thing is to click on this red button that says add workflow so after you do so a workflow will be created which will be used for the connection with google forms and MySQL. And then as you can see here this is the third step which basically you have to add a starting point a trigger on where or when your workflow should be running on an app event on schedule on a webhook call when called by another workflow or manually in some cases the http request node might might already serve as your starting point so here as you can see uh you have this so this is like the first point so here you have also like the triggers what triggers this event so uh, on app events on schedule on webhook call manually when called by another workflow uh, or other ways so you just have to add, add the first step now step number four is pretty simple drag the mysql node from the nose panel to the left to the workflow canvas before dragging through the action mysql will perform you can also swap steps and add the google forms node first as the step four as you can see this is mysql and this is like the trigger which we said the first step so here they have set it up so it can be start workflow next thing is authenticate mysql click on mysql node then click on the select credential drop down options next to the credential to connect with field follow the authentication process to grant innate access to your mysql you can also share credentials you have created and store sensitive credentials information in an external vault using NNH uh, external secret feature. So here we got the MySQL credential to connect with, authentication, resource and operation. Make sure to put your credentials right there. The step number six is simply add the HTTP request node to your workflow canvas and authenticated using a predefined credential type this allows you to perform custom operations without additional authentication setup so here this is google forms then let's go to the step number seven click on the http node to configure its settings with generic authentication you will typically need to provide endpoint urls headers parameters and any other authentication details specific to the service you are integrating with find the documentation of the google forms api and see if the api supports http requests and most apis require some sort of form of authentication and you can configure this in the http request mode basic authentication custom authentication digital authentication header authentication authentication one api authentication to api query authentication so here you have http requests you have to choose one of these authentications so basic custom digit header one two or query then step number eight in the step number eight connect the output of the google forms node to the input uh, of the mysql node 
or vice versa so this is the outputs and this is the inputs once you drag this into here they will be connected the same thing here this is the output this is the input so once it is connected you gonna be you just drag it and it's gonna be connected now for step number nine using an 8 core node to transform data from or the way you need and extend the integration you can split in using f and switch merge in merge compare data sets loop in f and loop over times or over items wait in which is wait creating sub workflows execute workflow and execute workflow trigger error handler uh, stop and error and error trigger code write custom javascript or python and run it as the step in your workflow these are the things mysql remove duplicate edit fields if are we finished uh, go forms no pressure and do nothing so these are the things that we have now for the step number 10 is basically save and activate a workflow once you have configured everything make sure to save your workflow and activate it activating workflow means that it will run automatically every time a trigger node receives input or meets a condition by default all newly created workflows are deactivated so this is something that you need to understand finally which is step number 11 is to test the workflow run the workflow to see if everything is working as expected based on your config configuration data should flow from google forms to mysql or vice versa depending on the previous steps and where you have put your um basically uh mysql or google, google form first so depending on where you have put them they are gonna go the way you did so easily debug your workflow you can check past executions to isolate the mistakes and fix it and that's pretty much it guys for today's video so as you can see here supported api endpoints for google forms you can delete get head option patch post put and for mysql support actions you can delete execute sql insert rows in a table insert or updates rows in a table select rows from a table and update a rows or multiple rows in a table so google forms and mysql integration details so here there's more details about it and more configuration or basically tutorials that you can literally watch on their own article so you can get some more into this topic and this is pretty much it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you faced any problems or mistakes make sure to mention them down below in the comment section and see you guys in the next tutorial bye bye